All right, welcome to another episode of this video blog slash podcast. I'm here at PHP Benelux 2016. We're nearing the end of the event, and I'm sitting with one of the Platinum sponsors, our main sponsor. It's Victor Welling from Clue Blue. Hi, Victor. How are you doing? Doing excellent. You're okay, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. Uh, I'm happy that you're here, and I'm happy to have this chat, and I would love you to introduce yourself to our audience back home. Yeah, so Victor Welling, um, I'm, well, I've been a lot at Clue Blue, been with Clue Blue for 10 years now, started off as a developer, lead developer architect uh, and nowadays here as a technical pathfinder and now for our international audience who is not aware of cool blue because in the, the Benelux area in Belgium Netherlands Luxembourg everyone knows cool blue everyone does but maybe outside it doesn't really ring a bell you're not a development shop per se right you have a you're something specific no we're not we're not a software house or a development shop we're an e-commerce company um, so we're active in the Netherlands and Belgium and we sell, well we started off with just MP3 players but nowadays we sell just about anything that we're able to fit in a box even if you know the box has to be very big. Look at the boxes people, yeah, we, those are the kind of boxes like yeah. if you work at the Belgium Mail you know these boxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nowadays you can uh, quite often see the postman struggling with, uh, with one of our uh, cool blue boxes. Those and Zalando I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Those are like I have a couple of friends who work uh, at the post office, and it's that and Zalando that often comes aboard. Yeah, but with us you don't get. Uh, I don't know if you have this commercial here with the screaming women when the box gets delivered, the Zalando box. No, but I think we. Uh, I've seen some colleagues do the screaming when your boxes arrive. Oh, uh, that's that's excellent. Yeah. So tell the people what kind of stuff you sell and how many stores you have. Your presence well, is is kind of impressive, and I would love to to share this with the audience. Yeah, so we have 360 different shops, so uh, 360, wow, 360. Um, domains under which we sell, you know, everything from tablets to like these big American style refrigerators, um, navigation systems. We even sell, because we're actually raffling off these these Star Wars BB-8 uh, robots. You know, if, if it fits in a box, we'll sell it. Awesome. So uh, you're a technical pathfinder you said that's exactly I've right. I've heard a lot of really cool job titles I'm a technical evangelist or a developer evangelist how you want to call it you are a pathfinder I've heard about digital strategists and advocates what does a pathfinder do that an evangelist doesn't do because you used to be an evangelist I right? used to be an evangelist yeah one of those job titles that you have to explain at every birthday party that you go to oh yeah I still <laughs> have to do that on a, a weekly basis yeah I can imagine now well I probably have to do the same with a technical pathfinder but um, yeah the idea is, is uh, with this role what we've really done is we um, we want to do like um, architecture in the teams so no longer have this one architect overseeing all of it so push architecture down into the teams but with the teams working on on, on features just in their sprints uh, we need a few guys who basically look ahead you know what what's on our on our roadmap um, maybe for new projects or maybe just for scalability so we have a few of these technical pathfinders that basically look ahead we do re technical reconnaissance and see what's out there see what we need to work on is it a uh, does it also involve R&D seeing what's out there in terms of new yeah, technology exactly things it's that could work things that maybe are a bit early to adopt already but it's yeah it's definitely it's it's a uh, kind of an R&D prototyping role but also very much collaborating and supporting our development teams and working with them to to continuously improve what we're what we're doing now let's talk some more numbers you, you told me you have more than 360 stores how many colleagues do you have and how many of them are do have a technical role oh well, right now we're a at about 1,500, 1,600 colleagues in total. So that's everyone ranging from um, you know, our logistical staff, our customer service employees to, to the IT guys. In IT, there's about 150, 160. Um, next Monday, uh, another 10 will join us. So that is a very rapidly changing number. Um, Imagine if you do, let's say you have an e-commerce store, just your mom and pop store, and you do a bit of e-commerce, and you say, well, we need a website. You're not going to have more than 100 people doing that, right? So that's that's to put that in perspective. That's kind of big, right? Yeah, that is kind of big. And as you know, for next year, we're constantly growing. So we're also constantly looking for new people. And this year, we expect to hire about 120 additional um, IT development staff. 
120. That's yeah. that's allowed. Any any other kind of jobs you're you're seeing to full or seeking to fulfill besides the technical part? Like what yeah, are you looking at? I think in total we have like 150 vacancies and all kinds of different job titles, and we expect to grow um, the number of colleagues that we have by about a thousand. Uh, of what course time of next span? year? Next year? This year, yeah. So end of 2016, we'll be up to 2,500 employees. So is that actually a 100 percent increase? Uh, yeah, much, or, or yeah almost. almost. Yeah, that's that's wild. Yeah. So that means business is booming. Business is booming. We uh, we had about 54 percent growth year on year. So and we've been doing that ever since Kublu started. So it's uh, yeah, business is very good. Now, from my experiences with Cool Blue, you guys focus heavily on uh, you have a good price. You're not the cheapest. You're not the most expensive, but you ship fast, really fast. Yeah, we try not to differentiate on price, um, but mainly on customer service. So, uh, good logistical propositions, uh, you know, fair um, conditions under which you can return your product. Uh, our customer service, you can reach them 108 hours a week through WhatsApp, YouTube, phone, email, any way you want. Uh, if you don't like the product, just simply return it, no questions asked. We're, we're very lenient in that, in that area. And yeah, our logistical proposition is, uh, is, is second to none. You know, if yeah, I, I experienced that this week for PHP Benelux. I was about to do some recording and I needed an extra micro SD card. So what I did is I decided I needed it on Wednesday evening, 10 p.m., I guess. And I said, I might as well drop the guys at Cool Blue an email and make sure they bring it on Thursday. But what I did, I took my chances. I ordered it, and the package with my micro SD cards got here faster than I got here. So when I arrived, the stuff was already there. So uh. yeah, there's also some credit to the Belgian Post, of course. But yeah, that's uh, uh, for a large part. You know, having we do our own logistics, we have our own warehouses. Everything is on stock. So you know, if you buy, it, we're able to get it out the door straight away. And that is cool, very cool. But it's sad in another way. Me being a Belgian, because that's all. Belgian money going to into the Dutch economy and that means that the Belgium e-commerce is not that competitive yet now we changed the laws most recently where it is allowed for people doing e-commerce to work at night especially the logistical aspect so you're miles ahead and we hope as Belgians to to try to keep up but I don't see it happening anytime soon there's a real e-commerce culture in Netherlands that we have less in Belgium any any take on that um, well yeah I know I, I'm not. Um, I'm not sure. The I think this is probably well down uh, maybe due to language differences that helps because you know if you have your shop in one language and then trying to serve another language that that might be an issue. Um, you know maybe internet penetration has been I guess uh, so. lagging behind. I, I guess so. The everyday, the everyday Joe, like the, the normal people in the streets. A lot of people use the internet, like most people use the internet, but like taking that next step and buying stuff online. I, I remember, uh, I think it's 10, 15 years ago, in the news that they said Belgians don't buy online. But that's changing, that's, that's changing. That's like, with the amount changing. of Zalando and cool blue boxes I see uh, being shoved through at the postal office, that is changing, but we're still miles behind, and that puts you in a, a somewhat of a comfortable position. But do you feel competition left and right? Because it's a, it's a formula, it's a successful formula, and you're not being secretive about it. It's in the open. You focus on fast delivery, you, uh, the shipment, the lenient conditions for returns, the good customer service. Like, if I were a new player on the market, I could adapt that service for whatever product I can. Are you feeling any competition left or right, or is it a comfortable drive right now? Well, of course, there's always going to be strong competition in a fast-moving field, but you know, I feel like we're doing a pretty good job uh, staying ahead of the curve. So. Now the final uh, non-technical thing I wanted to talk about is your brand awareness. Uh, as you might see here in the back, it's all blue and orange and everyone knows the boxes. There's lots of humor in the way they communicate, lots of openness. Can you tell us something about that? Not just from a commercial point of view, but also how it involves you, colleagues and the team spirit at the office? Yeah, well, the, the Cool Blue brand is what well, we've... Cool Blue has existed for, for uh, over 16 years now, but the Cool Blue brand is something that we only quite recently introduced about a, f a few years ago. And um, you know, that's, before that, it was just all the inv individual shops, and nowadays we're really pu putting the Cool Blue brand out there. And what people mostly notice about us is that we have a very different way of communicating. It's, it's very personal, it's humorous, it, you know, it doesn't have that corporate feel to it. And really that reflects just the way you know, 
colleagues interact amongst themselves and now you know the the sense of humor that we have in the office uh, and now we're just pointing that outwards so to us it's very natural to communicate in this way on the other hand because we're a fast growing company it's a culture and it's a way of communicating a way of doing things that we really need to you know protect and and cultivate but um, so far you know we're we're I think we're doing pretty well and it it a lot of people seem to like it yeah and uh Let's talk tech for a moment. So, you guys, uh, you guys work on the on the lamp stack, obviously. Uh, but well, not, not just lamp. lamp yeah. The lamp. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't abbreviate. No, as, there's as, as no nice, nice yeah. acronym for it. So you're using Linux systems with Nginx, Nginx Percona, uh, and PHP FPM. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, any other technologies that you're currently using that should be like, are you using message queues? Are you using caches? Like a typical thing to do e-commerce at scale? Yeah, we, we use Elasticsearch a lot. We, it powers our search engine. We do a lot of uh, filtering and we're using it more and more as a, as a sort of a read-only um, uh, data store. Sort of, uh, sometimes they call it or refer to it as a projection table. I tend to call it just flattened data yeah. to avoid the expensive joins that MySQL brings to the table. Yeah, exactly. So we're leveraging that more and more. Uh, next to that, we're using Redis, RabbitMQ. Um, I think we even have some memcache around. So yeah, just very typical components that you find in, in a you know a high traffic, high availability website. What are the challenges these days? Like you guys, as a pop find, you have to look ahead and try to tackle the problems that will occur. What is what is what is a challenge that you are looking at? Is it scale? Is it? Well, it's it's yeah. Uh, with a company growing this fast, it's always going to be scale. Um, so it's not just the number of products or the number of shops, but it's also the number of colleagues joining, uh, working on that code. So you know, making sure that that code base is in a good good state where people can easily work on it and be effective as developers. Um, it's just you know being faster and faster, supporting mobile devices better. Now there's so many challenges um, and directions in which in which you need to be able to you know grow and, and become better. So that's very much the challenge. It's you know working on the plane as you're flying it. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a cool challenge to work on. I can imagine. Now uh, apart from your role as a, a former uh, evangelist, a current technical pathfinder. You also have a life outside of Cool Blue, outside of tech, I guess. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. yeah we do, right? Yeah. We tend to do. Any, any cool hobbies, any cool things that you could share with the audience? Yeah, so I, you know, I like to, when I'm out of the office, I try not to touch code as much. Um, just because, you know, you, sometimes you just need to clear your mind. I find that I can do so very well on the track, the Nürburgring Notch Life for, for the fans out there. Uh, what yeah. kind of car do you drive there? It's a it's a Clio RS, um, so with a roll cage in it and semi slick tires and the works, um, and that's a, just a great way to relax and clear my mind. Um, and I really like doing that. Besides, in a competitive way or just recreational? No, it is recreational. It's uh, I'd love to you know be a professional racing driver, but um, I guess I should have uh, gone go karting when I was five and. Uh, Max Verstappen just beat me to it. So yeah, 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 he yeah. did. He did. Finally, a Dutchman <laughs> back in the Formula One. Any yeah. other things uh, you like to do in your spare time? Yeah, it's electronic music. So DJing, playing around with drum computers, that sort of thing. Uh, love doing that as well. I'm, I'm well. I've not that musical, but you know that still works for me. I find the technology really interesting as well. Just a lot of buttons that I can play around with. So it's still the geek in me just loves that. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, speaking of all these uh, nice things, we'll, uh, we'll end the interview here. Tonight, we won't be driving Nordschleife and Nürburgring. We'll bumper be driving cars. bumper cars yeah. and we'll see how far we get from there. Yeah. Another nice challenge. Yes. Thank you to Victor. Thank you for Cool Blue for being our main sponsor. I'm genuinely a fan. I'm not just saying that to lure you into another sponsor contract. I'm genuinely a fan. I like ordering stuff at uh, your company. I do hope there's mo some more competition from Belgium coming your way. That's just me saying that. We welcome it. But good job uh, with what you're doing. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.